All right, you guys, today we're going to take a look how to make this analog screen effect here in Photoshop inspired from Texture Labs. You can also check out his page. I definitely left with a lot more knowledge watching his tutorials. I'm going to go with this model as a reference. This is my artboard size, but first we're going to need to create the pattern. So let's go to File, New, and I'm going to make this 10 by 10 pixels, black background, click on Create. I'm going to zoom into this little square all the way. Now let's go ahead and select the rectangle here. Make sure that you don't have anything on the stroke. Click on the stroke, click on the None. Let's select the fill. I got to select the white. And from here, I got to go to the square at the middle and just drag it all the way so you can create a line like this. I'm going to create another one and another one. Now let's go and recolor these. I'm going to double click on the thumbnail and I'm going to make this rectangle the darkest. So let's go to the B. I'm going to type in 15, click OK. Let's go to the second one, double click. This is going to be the lightest one. So I'm going to set it on 80, click OK. Let's select the bottom one and this is going to be on 30. Click OK. I also want to separate this composition into two using a one pixel line. But as you can see in the middle, it is separated with two pixel lines. So I'm going to go to the image, image size, and I'm going to increase it to 100 by 100. Click OK. And great. And from here, make sure to uncheck this layer. Click somewhere here and I can select the rectangle. Make sure that you're on the black fill black. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to start somewhere here and create a rectangle all the way up to these lines. There you go. Make sure the layer is on the top right here. And I'm going to press Control A. Let's go up here and click on Align Vertical Centers. Press Control D to deselect. And now we're going to make these blurred out. So press and hold Shift. Let's select all these rectangles. Right click, convert to Smart Object. And let's go to the Filter, Blur and select Gaussian Blur. I got to go with 4.4, click OK. And now we're going to save this as a pattern. So let's go to the edit and let's select the define pattern, rename it, click OK. Now let's go back to the composition with the model. I also going to decrease the size a little bit more, click OK. And the first thing we're going to do is go to the layer, right click on it and convert to smart object. And let's go to the image adjustments and select hue saturation. We're going to make this black and white, so decrease the saturation all the way to minus 100. Click OK. And let's go to the filter, pixelate and select mosaic. I'm going to decrease this to 35. Click OK. And let's go to the image again, adjustments and select levels. Right now we're going to leave it as it is. Click OK. I'm also going to remove the smart filter. And now what I'm going to do is double click on the layer. Let's go and check the pattern overlay. And from here, I'm going to go to the pattern, change it up to the new pattern that I created. Click on it. Make sure the opacity is 100 percent. And let's go to the blend mode to change it to hard mix. Now, make sure that the scale is on the same size as the mosaic scale size. So that's going to be like 35. And also to align it correctly, make sure to uncheck link with layer and click on snap to origin. And now we're going to need to make this look more realistic as an analog screen. And in order to make this glow correctly, we're going to need to separate the black background. So let's go up here to the blending options and make sure to check this box blend interior effects as group. And all you need to do is go here to the current layer at the black side and drag the handle on the right side and check this out. It is going to eliminate the black. Click OK. Now we're going to add the black background separately. Let's go here, select solid color. Make sure you're on the black, click OK and drag it under the model. And right now this is how it's going to look. Now check this out if you want to change up the contrast and the pattern movement. All you need to do is double click here on the level and you can go to the handles and just arrange it differently and add more contrast to it. So as you can see, when you increase the contrast quite a bit, it is going to create these white pixelated areas. So if you want to make these disappear, all you need to do is go here to the output levels and bring the white handle to the left side and check this out. The more you reduce, the more these patterns are going to be visible. Now this looks pretty good. Click OK. And now we're going to go and group this layer. Press Control G to group it. Or you can go down here, create a folder and just drag and drop it into the group. And I'm going to zoom in and now let's go and double click on this group folder. And first we're going to go to the blending options. I'm going to decrease the fill opacity all the way down to zero. And we're going to activate the drop shadow. Let's go ahead and increase the opacity all the way up to 100. I'm going to change up the color to a green one. Click OK. Now, as you can see, the spread is on 100. I'm going to decrease it to zero. The size, I'm also going to decrease it. I'm going to go with four. And the distance is also going to be low. I'm going to go with three. Let's go to the blend mode, change it to linear dodge add. 
and I'm going to go and set up the angle in the opposite direction. Also make sure to uncheck use global lighting because we're going to need to add a couple of more shadows, which we're going to set in different directions. Let's also add some noise. And now we're going to create another shadow. Let's go to the drop shadow here and click on the plus. I'm going to go to the opacity, decrease it somewhere in the middle, change up the color. I'm going to add a different green, click OK, change up the angle. I'm going to put it somewhere here. Let's increase the size and let's add another shadow. And I'm going to go and change this up to cyan, a stronger one, click OK, increase the size even more. I'm going to go with some around 80, 90, click on the plus, add another green color, click OK. Let's increase the size even more. And I'm also going to increase the distance. I'm going to go with like 50 and I'm going to add the last drop shadow. And this is going to be a bluish, click OK. And let's go and change up the angle and increase the distance. I'm going to go all the way something like this and increase the size all the way up. And up at least we're also going to need to fill up these interior parts, which are black. Let's go to color overlay and I'm going to make it white. Click OK. I'm also going to activate the outer glow and decrease the size, maybe on two. And I'm going to go back to the color overlay, maybe decrease it a little bit. I'm going to go with like 90 ish. Click OK. And this is how it looks. Thanks for watching.